Let's continue. But after having maybe a few too many wines and then succumbing to his seductive ways, I agreed to go back to his apartment. He told me his flatmate was up the coast, so we had the whole place to ourselves. How convenient. He poured me a glass of champagne, but before I could even take a sip, we were kissing. Then he took my hand and we went to his bedroom. The sex was out of this world. Amazing. He was so loving and attentive, and I just found him so attractive. What she just did here was exactly what the 23-year-old that I talked about in episode 498, who cheated on her boyfriend with his best friend and ended up pregnant, doesn't know who the father is, which is putting herself in the passive role, which divorces her from any and all culpability in terms of what happened. She had sex with the guy, but never once did she say, I got horny and I wanted to have sex, so we had sex. No. Instead, she blames it on, number one, first having too much to drink. Then she said she succumbed to his seductive ways. As if to imply that had it not been for her drinking too much and Pablo's seductive ways, she would never have slept with him. Even though she went back to his place and were kissing before she could even take her first sip sip of champagne that he poured her. This is why we always laugh at women when they cry double standard. This is why we all roll our eyes when they tell us that their past banana gobblery doesn't matter. And it's the same reason they're always trying to cover it up. It's the same reason why they just never admit to being a banana gobbler simply because they wanted to gobble bananas. This is the same reason why they always divide their real notch counts by 25. It's the same reason why they're always dishonest about their past. It's because it matters. And women know it matters. This is why they're always trying to cover their banana gobbling tracks. Women like to pretend that it doesn't matter, that their pasts don't matter, until it does matter, which is exactly what happened to this chick, as we will see here, when Pablo makes the right decision about her based on her actions and not her policy. After we made love, she says, we had a shower together and got back into bed. That's when he devastated me. He told me that he'd had a great night, but he wouldn't see me again after that night, and I couldn't believe his reasons. His reason. He thought I'd given myself away too quickly and too easily, and he didn't like that about a woman. He wanted a date he could respect, and he said he couldn't respect women who are too easy. I was horrified, she said. He made me feel worthless. Yes, I'd slept with him on our first date, and I'd only done that once before in my life. (laughs) Of course you have. But what about the double standards, she asks. I was sleeping with him on the first date, but he was also sleeping with me on our first date. I tried to explain how unfair he was, but he didn't listen and didn't care. I got out of bed right away and got dressed. There was no way I was going to spend the rest of the night with him. I told him I thought that he should be ashamed of making me feel bad and that I wished I'd never slept with him or met him. He just looked at me with a smirk on his face and said, goodbye, have a nice life. I've never been so humiliated, she says. What women fail to realize is that they are a part of this, quote, double standard when it comes to sex. They're not attracted to men who have very little experience with women sexually, but are very attracted to men who have a lot of experience with women sexually. Ladies, that's not a social construct. This is biology. Women don't want men that other women don't want. This is Red Pill 101. This is Seduction 101. No matter how much women want this to be different, this is not the way it is. And because of their biological directive to be with sexually pre-selected men, they indirectly help to create this unfair double standard between men and women when it comes to sexual partners. Now that said, we know that whatever sexual standard applies to women, the complete opposite applies to men. This is how it is across the board, guys. Virginal women are extremely valuable. Virginal men are extremely not. Every man, listen, every man a woman sleeps with lowers her value, while every woman a man sleeps with increases his value. Dominant men are sexually attractive. Dominant women are sexually gross. The list goes on and on, but you guys get the picture. But here's the thing. Women do know this stuff. Okay? They know these things. They're acutely aware of these things, but then they want to act all scandalized when a man actually holds her to the true biological standard which is while men t- which is while men take advantage of a lack of sexual temperance from a woman they do not respect it men of value which pablo obviously is do not commit to women who give it up on the first date that's all there is to it now 
We're certainly going to try to tap that ass, right? We're men. It's what we do. And if we don't at least try, we lose the respect of women for many, many reasons. And I talked about this. <clears throat> pardon me. And I talked about this. I talked about this and not committing to females who give it up on the first date in episode 429. Take a listen. My good friend Paul all the time, right? I tell him, dude, if girls want me, if, if girls want my commitment, they absolutely cannot give in. Because I'm going to try to fuck you, right? I'm not afraid to make the first. I'm not afraid to make the first move. I'm not afraid to make, I'm not afraid of rejection. If I want to fuck a girl, I'm going to try. And if you let me fuck you, great. We'll have great sex and it'll all be good. But understand, the moment my cock enters your body on the first date, the chances of you being my girlfriend are zero. I'll continue to fuck you. I'll let you come over, have a few drinks, bench you over my couch once, maybe twice a week. But if I fuck you on the first date, there is no way I am making you my main chick. There is no way I am committing to you or becoming exclusive with you. Trying to fuck a girl on the first date is the one true way to find out whether or not she's a slut. She can say whatever she wants, guys. She can act however she wants. But if she gives up the ass on the first date, she is she is put into the slut category, which means all she gets from me is a dick and the occasional uh, and, and the occasional whiskey shot. Now, just because she doesn't fuck you on the first date doesn't mean she's not a slut. A lot of girls doing this these days, especially women who are past the wall. So if she doesn't fuck you on the first date, it doesn't mean she's not a slut, but it does keep her off the it does keep her off of the side chick list or the fuck buddy list at least for a while anyway. So again, the fourth and most important reason you should always try to sleep with a girl on the first date. Well, you should always try to fuck her. It lets you know right off the bat whether or not she's a slut. 